We're like seven years into this console. We've all been buying and collecting and playing games on it now for almost a decade. So you would think the games would start slowing down. But in this video, I have 20 to 30 awesome games that are coming to the Switch. I recently went to PAX East for the second year in a row. I got in my car with my wife, Kim, and we drove up to Boston. If you don't know what PAX is, it's a giant show floor filled with video games. They're all showing off what they got and you're able to jump on and play a lot of these games. And most of the time, meet the developers of the games and ask them questions like, is your game coming to the Switch? I had so much fun at PAX this year with my wife and all of my friends. I can't wait to show you everything. Stepping out onto the show floor and seeing the sea of people is always really daunting. But it helped that immediately off to the right was where Nintendo and Pokemon were stashed. This is everything that Nintendo and Pokemon brought. There's like this big chalkboard Pokemon Pokemon wall here where you can draw whatever you want. Then Eevee and Pikachu are here around the corner. You can play a selection of Nintendo games here, like Detective Pikachu. It's a weird selection of games that they brought, but it's just cool that Nintendo and Pokemon are here. Yeah, obviously, it would be cooler if there was a game here that wasn't released yet. That's kind of the whole idea of PAX is all these developers bring games that aren't out, but it's probably too soon for Pokemon to show off Pokemon Legends ZA. It was just announced and we haven't even seen gameplay for it. It's slotted for 2025. But they could have had a little something, a little promo for it, handing out little Pokemon ZA pins. I don't know. Either way. I loved Arceus, so I'm really excited for Pokemon ZA. Okay, but let's dive into the first game on the floor I saw, a game called Little Lands. The second I saw this, I jumped on and started playing. I can't find any reference to this being inspired by the recent Link's Awakening remake, but I mean, come on. It's an action adventure game where you play as a big headed youngster exploring, growing berries and searching for treasures. There's farming, cooking, fishing, insect catching and more. While I was playing, the game starts with an old DOS style game that crashes and then reveals that you're just a character playing this video game in their bedroom before going downstairs and talking to their mother. And this felt very the start of Pokemon-y for me. So this is very clearly Nintendo inspired. And this is probably a good time to mention that most of these games are listed as coming to Nintendo Switch. But some of them, I am making a lot of assumptions. And this one is one I am assuming is going to come to Switch. You know that they want to capitalize on the Switch audience and Nintendo fans. <laughs> hey, how you going? Hate to interrupt the video, you enjoying it? A lot of cool games coming out like this one and this one and this video is sponsored by Raycon. <laughs> you know, Mother's Day is coming up and you know how their moms, they're always asking for just a little bit of peace and quiet. Well, I have a better option here than avoiding them for the last 15 years. <laughs> Buying them a pair of Raycons. Now hear me out here. They're noise isolating so they can't hear you yapping in the background. They have eight hours of playtime so you'd have to yap for longer than that. And joke's on you, if you stick them back in this neat little carry case, they get up to 32 hours of battery life. So yap away, buddy. Your mom's listening to literally hours of her favorite crime drama podcast. Raycons Everyday Earbuds are the best way to tune out the world around you. They have fantastic audio quality that rivals the other top brands and start at like half the price of them. I use these Raycons almost every day. I'm not kidding. I have two pairs, this black pair that stays in the house and I use it when I'm home or when I go for a walk and then a blue pair that I leave in my car and I take to the gym. And what I love about them is it doesn't matter if I'm running, squatting, bench and pressing, whatever. They have like this perfect fit, makes it so they don't fall out of my ears. There's no risk in trying a pair because you get a 30 day money back guarantee. I mean, I could go on and on, but I won't because I don't have to. <laughs> you can click the link below or go to buyraycon.com forward slash beat-em-ups to get 20% off a pair of Raycons and free shipping. That's more percent than normal. I even took them to PAX. That's not kidding because they were in my car. That's where I keep my blue pair. <laughs> but speaking of PAX, 
Let's look at some more games. Next, as I'm walking around, I see the new Rugrats game. Bob seemed to really like it. He was taken by the fact that it felt just like an old NES game. It's created by the Limited Run team, the people that take digital games and turn them physical. So you can buy this on Switch or you can buy it on a physical NES cartridge and actually use it on an old school NES. So that's pretty cool. But on the back side of the Rugrats stand, there was a game called Renane, Renane. Re Renine? Really bad at pronouncing things. When I first saw Renane and was standing there playing it with the dev, I said in a very complimentary way, this game reminds me a lot of Shovel Knight. This is Renane. It's kind of like uh, Super Mario World, Thousand Year Door, and Third Strike had a baby. I'm not sure where any of those inspirations come into play, at least in the demo that I played. Maybe they all come in after that, but I finished the demo and I really liked it. Even in the short time I played, there was a lot of fun characters to meet, including a cute marshmallow dog named Chompy that follows you around and fights with you. The dev said he was having a lot of fun writing for all the characters in the world. He's by far the funnest person to write for in this game. And everyone's fun to write for. The combat feels good. You have a few different slashing type attacks that you can combo together. The controls were really tight and responsive and the one boss battle I did felt very nostalgic and had a fun little nice Easter egg hidden in it too. Heading Out is a game that I was really excited to check out. Now I thought for sure I'd heard that this one was coming to the Switch, but they're not even sure if this would run on the Switch. Regardless, I played it, so I want to show it to you. It's a black and white rogue-like narrative road movie racing game, which is such an interesting mesh of concepts. Each level is backed by an original 70s and inspired music track. You race as the song plays and then the level ends once the song ends. The driving felt pretty solid. I appreciated the pops of red and yellow around the world. The black and white aesthetics is uh, awesome and I'm really, really glad that we stick to it. We use mostly uh, yellow and red. They stick out a lot. So if you want to emphasize something like the route you want to take or, or the lights, you can emphasize um, yeah, elements good, like I that. Like the Steam page also says this game addresses racism, mental health, anxiety, depression, inequality, quality and other social issues with a lot of strong and vulgar language being used. So right at home on the Switch, I guess. It's time to get a little, a little, a little lewd with <laughs> Kamikaze Last Planes. The trailer for this game does list a Switch and Steam release. The game is a visual novel mixed shoot 'em up and you play through the game as either Alva or Hannah, two girls who can turn into fighter planes. Depending which girl you pick, both parts of the game will be different. Each girl will interact differently during the visual novel conversation and each girl has different abilities as a play. You guys know I'm not a huge fan of visual novels, but I did appreciate he told me that you can just play an arcade mode that's only the shoot 'em up parts. And that I'm interested in because I got to play it on a Steam Deck on the show floor and it was really fun. He also said that a physical release is coming to Switch hopefully by the end of the year. So this booth that we're at with Kamikaze Last Planes, every developer here, they're all Polish developers. And as I was done playing Last Planes, one of the other developers came over and said, hey, I saw your Japan vlog, while you were there, you bought one of my games, Cereal Cleaners. I'm so happy that that happened. It was such a sweet moment. But then he handed me two more of his games, Buddy Simulator 1984 and Dark. I don't have either of these. It just meant so much to me that he gave them to me. And I'm really excited to check these ones out too, because Cereal Cleaners looks really cool. Still haven't had a chance to play a lot of those games I bought in Japan. I gotta be honest, but that's at the top of my list now. But now it's like two o'clock or something, and it's my appointment time with Apogee, which means going into a hotel room across the street from the convention where they rented out a whole suite and they filled it with their booths. And I've got to play favorites here. Quest Maker is easily my favorite game from the entire weekend. I'm sat with the creator of the game right now, who's super awesome. I can already tell this is my favorite game of the whole weekend. I don't think I have to play. Well, there's a lot more I have to play. I'm being <laughs> facetious, but I have done my favorite thing and I'm very excited for this game to come out on Switch. It's literally Zelda a link to the past dungeon maker. And when I say literally, I mean, I don't think they can get sued, but that, uh, that certain lines are being skirted. It feels exactly like top down 2D Zelda to play. The way the sword slashes and moves, the way you get around the switches to the torches to unlock chat, it's, it's, all, it's all the same. It looks awesome though. Some players really like making dungeons, but some like really don't. You can share dungeons online and play them. There's also a single player campaign the game ships with. It's about four to six hours of story content, which is just going to be like a few dungeons we built. It even had three player co-op that works during the adventuring part and 
and the creating part. There's so many nice details here, like an infinite space to build. I don't understand, but he said it's like the universe. It's ever expanding. And then there's multiple floors that you can stack on top and go forever again. I asked him, won't this bog down the switch at some point or cause frame rate issues? And he said that they have some kind of technology that the whole thing that makes this game work is the same thing that would assure that that doesn't happen. I can't wait to actually stress test that. Literally everything you would expect to get out of a dungeon maker for Zelda seemed to be here. I really appreciated him talking us all through it and explaining all the mechanics because it was kind of overwhelming. It's really well thought out and I really look forward to this game. I love it. I'm so excited. Then I literally just moved one seat over and played a game called Lucid. It's like a Metroidvania with, you know that bit in Celeste where if you dash into something it yeah. refreshes? Yeah. It's that Okay. Push to its limit. Lucid is Celeste meets Metroidvania, and the movement is fast and fluid, with you being able to infinitely combine air movements by dashing and slashing through the environment. Also, I was playing this with the dev for this game too, and the Metroid inspiration was clearly here. It made the exact same sound from Metroid games when you get an item. Even the map screen looks exactly like Super Metroid's map screen. This map is straight out of Metroid. Is it? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't notice. Oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> The art style is fantastic, everything really pops, it's fast and fluid to play, almost like a Sonic game. Yeah, it's really cool. And then in the same seat, I played Wizard Drum. Now out of all the games I played up here in Apogee, this is the only one that I think I forgot to ask if it's coming to Switch, and I couldn't find anywhere online saying that it is, but Apogee, all of their games are targeted for Switch. Seems pretty one for one that this one will too. It's literally old school Wolfenstein, but with a wizard. The classic firearms are replaced with, well, firearms. It was really fast paced and felt exactly how I remember old Wolfenstein playing. I'm pretty sure they said it was developed by one guy who just wanted to make the game for himself. So that's cool. But from Wolfenstein to Doom Turbo Overkill, they demanded that I played it up here for this weird reason that apparently the show floor version was the PC version that was made on the Unity engine. And for whatever reason, they couldn't put that version onto consoles. So they kind of had to rebuild it from scratch for consoles. And in doing that, it made the console version better. So he really wanted me to check out the PlayStation 5 version. It is coming to Switch though, and I know that because after I was done playing the Sony version, he literally just brought out what I think is a dev Switch and was playing Turbo Overkill on it, and it looked amazing. This game is quite literally Doom 2016. Dashing, shooting, picking up more ammo, shooting more. It feels exactly how you would expect. So if you want to see a game that is, I don't want to say actually, very inspired by Paper Mario, Baladins. It's a one to four multiplayer narrative RPG that plays out like a tabletop game with elements similar to Baldur's Gate where you have to roll for certain actions and you can only make so many moves per turn. You explore around a beautiful world, meeting characters, doing quests, and Kim was obviously filming me this whole weekend and I really appreciate and love Kim for doing that. But she said this was one of the games that she's really excited to play. She thought it looked super cute, really fun, and it's coming to Switch. This booth that I'm at now has two games I wanted to check out. The other one was Snacko. Actually, I booked both of these games for Kim. Specifically this one, because it's a game just like Stardew Valley, which we both love, but you play as a cat and there's cats everywhere. We both love cats. What I really appreciated more than anything was when you place furniture around, there's not a grid-based system. You can just place furniture wherever you want, which is great. There's no restrictions. It was a short demo, but it does look cute. All of that was just day one at PAX for us. Now it's time for us to go eat dinner with everybody, party the night away. And by party the night away, I mean, I mean, Kim and I were in bed by 10 p.m. because we're sleepy little guys. And I had to be at the show floor at midday the next day because Bob and I had a signing. Just like last year at the Retro Web booth, we just met people for an hour, hour and a half. So much fun. I love doing this where we just get to meet fans of ours, Bob and me of the podcast that we both did together for a long time and now I do on my own, but also fans of our channels individually. And if you came out to say, hey, thank you so much. I love, love, love meeting you guys. Just before we check out our first game of the day, I want to say a setting on my camera got knocked this day and it made all of the footage from today look really grainy. So I apologize for that. Kim had been pointing out this first game all weekend. So I wanted to make sure we went here first and that's Ollie Frog. This booth was so busy the whole weekend. I never managed to actually talk to anybody to find out when or if it's coming to Switch. But I went online and there is a listing by Nintendo Life for this game on the eShop. And I mean, uh, look at 
at it. It's a cute little cartoon skating Tony Hawk game with frogs. This is gonna happen. Another little bit of guesswork for the Switch release, which I'll talk about in a second, is for Fallen Aces. And all weekend, I thought this game was called New Blood, but apparently that's the developer name. The game is called Fallen Aces, and it looks amazing. It's a crime noir FPS that plays right out of the 90s and looks like a comic book come to life. The cell shaded 3D environments contrast with the 2D animated characters is so cool. And the animations for all the actions and characters is perfect. I really love it. It's only on PC right now, but I just asked someone that works here, is it coming to Switch? And they're usually not allowed to say anything, but they're like, probably at some point, maybe. <laughs> I'm this is what happened last year. There were a couple of games that I assumed were coming to Switch. Turns out they weren't announced to be coming to Switch. And some of the developers messaged me like, hey, we haven't announced the Switch version yet. And since then, the Switch versions of those games have been announced, but I'm not trying to be the guy that announces any of these. I don't know nothing. There's a good chance I'm wrong about some of these. I also spent a whole weekend playing these really fun games and whether they come to Switch or not, some of them I think are so cool and my audience would genuinely want to see and know about these games that I wanted to show you. Kim caught another game at the corner of her eye called Sorry We're Closed. It was the art style and colors that popped out of the screen that drew her attention. Someone working at the booth said it was inspired by PlayStation 1 classics, which yeah, it looks a lot like the first Resident Evil. They heavily implied to me they wanted to do a Switch release. I think this one stands out enough to do well. I mean, it's a survival horror game with multiple endings. It's creepy, unsettling. I'm looking forward to checking this out. Okay, I know that was two or three in a row I was doing a little bit of assuming on, but the next one is confirmed for Switch, I promise, and that's Venture to the Vile. It's a 2.5D Metroidvania set in a Victorian inspired fantasy world. Oh, there's a demo on Steam right now, and its release date is set for May 7th. There's a good amount of platforming around the levels. Yeah, I just think it looks good. Another Kim game. This uh, booth here had a bunch of games that all said they were coming to Switch, and a couple that stood out to me. One was Wudo, and not just because my name is in it. A lot of people were buzzing about this game through the weekend, actually. It's a cozy 3D puzzle game based on a simple diorama assembly mechanic with a beautiful visual art style. The idea of the game is to immerse you in a peaceful, safe environment. It just looks so sweet. Then another one I saw here was Capes. It's an XCOM style game with turn-based strategy RPG gameplay where you play as heroes. It's very comic book themed. Now, I was watching this one get played for a while and it's hard to tell while watching these games if they have in-depth mechanics. I was getting the vibe that maybe this one might not be as uh, fleshed out as something like XCOM, but I was definitely intrigued and it was the only strategy RPG of this style that I saw the whole weekend. And then Wild Woods. I like the art style and gameplay for this one. It gave me Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicle vibes. It's a couch co-op game with up to four players. You play as a cat and you have to defend a wooden wagon on its way through a dangerous forest. And when I asked the developer there, are you going to bring it to Switch? What they said was they're a very small team and the game was overwhelming them. They bit off more than they could chew and they were just trying to make sure the game was good for when it releases on PC, which I can really appreciate. The only reason I'm putting it in the list is because I thought it looked fun. Athena Crisis. It's another game that people were buzzing about all weekend and the catchphrase that I kept hearing was, did you see the Advanced Wars game? There's no current word for Switch release, but it's a game I know you guys are going to want to see. It's already out on PC with really positive reviews and it literally literally looks like Advanced Wars. Visually, it's great. You have over 40 units you can control, single player and ranked or casual online multiplayer modes. Yeah, I just, I couldn't find anything out about a Switch release. But again, just like with Little Lands, when you're making a game based on Nintendo nostalgia, you really want to get that game out to your target demographic. And it's not a huge leap to assume they want to put it on Switch. If you're sick of me assuming, don't worry because the next game, it's like PC and Switch, and that's Frame Makers. And this might be a lot of you watching. This one might be your favorite. The reason for that is this game is Smash Brothers for indies. And I'm so excited excited for it. You can tell just by looking at the gameplay, it really aims to replicate the feel of Smash, but with all these great indie characters and their own unique movesets. From what we've seen so far, we have Commander Video from the Bit Trip and Runner games, Well Taro from Downwell, Octodad or Can, Ultra Fish Bunjin from It'll Do, and The Watcher from Slay the Spire. And there are loads of assist characters so far. Everything from Renane, which is funny because that's a game we've already talked about in this video. It's not even 
even out yet. Ape Out, Among Us, Getting Over It, Gunman Clive, Pizza Tower, man. I love this so much. It's so wholesome to see all these indie teams come together and share their IPs like this. You guys are gonna like this next one, Forge of the Fae. It's another one that again, Kim and I just happened to notice as we were walking by. I told the exhibitor it reminded me of Sea of Stars and he very quickly pointed out that while this game was inspired by many of the same games that Sea of Stars was, Forge of Fae is a lot more in depth. But he also said it's way less linear and allows for a lot more exploration. When I asked him, is it coming to Switch? He said a lot of stuff and then ended with, ah, uh, probably. Not to sound like a broken record, but if your game is inspired by Nintendo, you kind of want to put it on a Nintendo system. This next one is exploding onto Switch and it's called Anton Blast. It's art style screams pizza tower to me. It's fast paced, explosive action platformer that's all about destruction. It reminds me of early 90s cartoons with the attitude, specifically Looney Tunes and Taz. I could hear the music and sound effects on the floor and it was just so nostalgic of old Super Nintendo games I used to play. I really, really love the way this one looks. I've mentioned the RetroWare booth a couple of times where I did my signing, but let's actually go over and take a look at the games they brought. It was stacked this year and they were all coming to Switch. Toxic Crusaders, which is the Toxic Crusaders beat em up fighting game that we talked about last year. But now they're also making a game called The Transylvania Adventure of Simon Quest, which is a parody homage 8-bit platformer. If you played any of the original Castlevanias, then you know what you're in for here. Then they're also making Iron Me, which looks like their take on the original Contra series. And again, it looks just like how you would expect, but cranked up a few extra notches. Kim and I always play Pokemon Go everywhere we go. While we were waiting for lunch, Kim and I were playing a little bit of Pokemon Go when I just want to flex that I caught a shiny Groudon. I can't believe this happened twice, but I went over to this booth that has Coffee Talk, which we've talked about before. It's a game on Switch that's awesome. But the developer there, for Space for the Unbound, so I think I'm pronouncing his name correctly, Ika. Sorry if I'm not. The first thing he said to me was, you bought my game while you were in Japan. And yeah, I bought Space for the Unbound in Japan. It was so crazy that this happened twice at the same convention. Then I checked out Ika's new game and it's Test, Test, Test. It's currently free on Steam. And I want to give it a shout out because it's awesome. It's set in a strange time loop that you have to keep playing over and over and over until you figure out what's going on and you manage to break the loop. It's really good. I'm checking out another game that's here at this booth called Whisper Mountain Outbreak. I like this one a lot more than I expected to. It's an isometric co-op PVE multiplayer survival horror game set in 1998. As I was playing, I had to fight monsters, find keys, solve puzzles, and try to stay alive. I really like the lighting effects with the levels being really dark, but your flashlight shining the way ahead of you. Before we get to our last Switch game, I'm literally just gonna talk about a game that is not coming to Switch. There is a giant booth here at PAX for Sandland. I wanna talk about it because Akiri Toriyama recently passed away. This was a manga that he made in the 2000s. This game's been in development for a while. I'm really looking forward to playing this game. Sandland is an upcoming action role-playing game developed by Ilka. It kind of looks like Power World in a way, with this highly detailed Unreal Engine visual style, but then these cartoony main characters taking the forefront. So yeah, I'm hoping that this one ends up being a lot of fun. The final game that I played in this whole weekend and the final game that's coming to Switch is Shadows of the Damned Remaster. But what's more cool than that is that I got to sit down with the developer of this game, Suda51, ask him questions about the game, interview him, get to know him a little bit. These these games changed me as a video gamer back in the day. I tell this story a lot, but I grew up with Nintendo and Devil May Cry was the first game that really showed me how different games can be outside of a Nintendo system. And when I found Shadows of the Damned, this over the top, very vulgar action game, it really resonated with me. I loved it so much that I made sure to get Lollipop Chainsaw next. His surreal concepts really made me want to find more of that in video games. He's also the creator of Kill 
Formula 7 and the No More Hero series. I don't really resonate with developers often. There isn't many devs that I look to and I'm like, I'm gonna play everything that this person makes. But for the longest time, Suda has been one of those creators for me. I've always wanted to play whatever he makes next. And getting to meet him and talk with him, he was so nice as well. I was very nervous and I didn't really know where to look. My brain got confused because even though I knew I was talking with Suda, it felt like I was having a conversation with the interpreter, but I felt like I never even looked at Suda. Like I was also just nervous every time that I did. In general, I just think it's great that this game can be put in front of more people because it's a great game, but also Suda in general. If you've never played this game, it's a third person over the shoulder shooter set in hell and your gun talks to you. His name is Johnson and he's a big bone. You get the joke. Getting to play it at PAX and talking to Suda was easily my highlight of the whole weekend. I'm still a little giddy about it. I don't really like going to giant convention halls with loads of booze. I get really overwhelmed, but there's something about going and meeting all these indie devs and developers in general, talking with them, playing their games, then getting to talk and review their games and, and get people excited to play them. Easily one of my favorite things that I do on the internet. So I hope you've seen some things today that you can be excited for and look forward to buying when and if for some of them, they even come to the Switch. But I love you guys. If you enjoyed this video, let me know. Like it, subscribe to it, comment on it. Let me know down below what your, the game you're most excited for is.